I'm going to tell you the story of two lifelong friends from Merritt, New York, who stumbled into making the most spectacular premium ice cream in the world. But this story begins with failure. Ben Cohen, a school dropout, dreamt of becoming a potter. While his friend, Jerry Greenfield, managed to complete college, he was still unable to get into medical school. The not-so-sporty friends had bonded in gym class when Jerry had fainted. The friendship grew, and with these two rejections, Ben and Jerry decided to do something together. The only rule was it had to be something to do with food. The first idea was a bagel shop, but after costing everything up, it was clear that the cost was too high. Then they had an idea. They enrolled on a correspondence course for $5 from Penn State to learn how to make ice cream. They split the cost and a few days later received the textbook in the post. Armed with the what, they moved on to the how and started looking for premises for their new venture. Burlington, Vermont became the location of choice and in particular, a rundown, dilapidated gas station. Each of them put in $4,000 Ben got half of his 4K from his dad, coupling that with another 4K from the bank. A few months later, while not exactly perfect, Ben and Jerry's first ice cream parlor was opened in May of 1978. One of the secrets to their success was the fact that Ben had severe anosmia, which is a lack of a sense of smell, which makes tasting things hard and often people crave textures. But they turned this inability into their superpower. Jerry got Ben to taste all the ice creams. This ensured the ice creams were intense in flavor and also rich in textures, which was in contrast contrast to the majority of premium ice creams on the market at that time. In 1981, their first franchise opened, and by 1984, the big boys were starting to take notice. Market leader in the premium ice cream market was pseudo-Scandinavian named haagen who were wary of these new upstarts. They were so scared of them that they tried to limit Ben & Jerry's distribution opportunities. haagen owned by Pillsbury, had a lot of clout and told distributors that if they continued to stock Ben & Jerry's, they would no longer supply their highly profitable haagen brand. In their typical style, Ben & Jerry knew they couldn't fight a $4 billion company in court. So they took their plight to the people and created a campaign called What's the Doughboy Afraid Of? They launched advertising, put up signs, and even got t-shirts printed. The campaign got picked up by press, and with this and public pressure, the David and Goliath tale got Pillsbury to drop the distribution restrictions, and Ben and Jerry were able to expand nationwide for the first time. Ben and Jerry's continued to grow their unique brand style, standing out against all the others in the marketplace, such as haagen Frozen Glade, and Alpine Zeba. Their difference also extended to their ingredients, constantly walking the fine line of new and familiar, combining textures and flavors that had no right to work together, but somehow did, becoming household favorites. Wrapped up in creative storytelling, Ben and Jerry's also shared their beliefs as a business. Their open, friendly, and transparent values were shown in how they treated their staff and the world. For the majority of the time, they kept the top salary at their company no more than five times larger than the lowest paid worker's salary. They set up the Ben & Jerry's Foundation with 7.5% of the company's annual pre-tax profits going towards community projects. And they openly shared where and how they source their ingredients. So when we look at Ben & Jerry's, what can we learn? Well, for us, one of the most important things is that failure isn't the end. It's the start of a richer understanding of a problem. Their first rum and raisin flavor, for example, was so rubbery they couldn't even get their spoon in to taste it. So be open to failure, learn from it, and move on. Number two, being open with your customers. From the campaign against Pillsbury to publishing where their ingredients come from, Ben and Jerry's have always nurtured their community of customers. Number three, stand out and have fun. Whether by luck or judgment, they created a premium ice cream brand that was so different from the marketplace, it was impossible to ignore. I hope you enjoyed the fable today. Do give us a like and a comment and do consider subscribing. We post nearly every week about design, design thinking, brand and digital. Thanks again and see you in the next one.